I hope you're having a great day. I hope you had a great weekend and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk about th the thyroid gland again. And can you reverse thyroid in most cases? Yes, even if it's a Hashimoto's thyroid or even if it's just an underactive thyroid gland. Yes, you can reverse it. It's not because Luke says that you can do it. It's because people have been reversing their thyroids, making lifestyle changes for the longest time. And it shouldn't also be because your doctors tell you that once you get on a thyroid medication, you can never get off it. It's for a lifetime. Well, if you believe that, you'll never make the re required changes or the necessary changes that some people chose to do and got off the meds with their docs in the loop. We need to understand that if there's a problem in the body, your body has the ability to heal it in most cases. But just because you're told that you can never get better or you need to take a medication for a lifetime and because you believe that, you never do the things that you don't know can make a difference. So as I speak to you, there are thousands of people across the world, thousands of them. I can see some of you have already logged in. You're some of those people who have reversed their thyroid by making lifestyle changes. Number one, if you're looking at reversing your thyroid, like I said, most people can. Some people, maybe it's too complicated and they cannot but it doesn't stop you from trying. Number one, you need to know what kind of thyroid issue you have. There are so many people out there who think they just have a thyroid problem. You wanna know if your thyroid is a Hashimoto's thyroid. Even though the medical world says it doesn't matter because guess what? They don't have a medication to treat you for that. They give you the same medication if you have a Hashimoto's and the same medication if you have an underactive thyroid gland, which is not wrong. It's the right thing. It works with your thyroid, your thyroxine levels, but you're missing so much more. What if you have a Hashimoto's thyroid, which is an autoimmune condition? At least you know that you have an autoimmune condition and you can take preventive steps from that autoimmune condition moving from a Hashimoto's thyroid to an arthritis, a lupus, a vitiligo, an eczema, or a psoriasis. So that's what preventive medicine is all about. It cares about you as a whole, not just the symptom. Okay, allopathy is good for the symptom. I'm not against it. You have a thyroid problem, you need medicine. Yes, you should be on medication, period. But its limitations are only looking at the symptom. When you look at holistic medicine, which you should be looking at, at preventive medicine, you should be asking yourself, why is my thyroid gland not working? What can I do to fix it? Not just take a pill, your parameters look good and you're all happy. No, you could be missing an underlying trigger because remember, a symptom is always your body trying to warn you about something. So yes, you can suppress the symptom, but you're also suppressing a warning, which could be warning you to make several other changes that can prevent the onset of a deadlier disease. So number one, if you have a thyroid problem, yes, you should be also checking your anti-ATG and your anti-TPO levels because if these levels come high, you know that you have a Hashimoto's thyroid. If you know you have a Hashimoto's thyroid, you know that your underactive thyroid gland is caused because your immune system constantly gets erratic and attacks your gland. Now, you can do a lot to stop that. If it's a Hashimoto's thyroid, number one, you look at the health of your gut. Number two, you look at your stress levels. One commonality that I've seen in thousands of thyroid patients over the last eight years is chronic stress exists in every single thyroid patient. Every single thyroid patient has chronic stress. And scientifically, it is linked with any thyroid condition. The more and more you constantly get stressed, a little bit of stress here and there is not gonna cause you a problem. A little bit of stress is good for us. I'm talking about chronic stress. Your cortisol levels go up, adrenaline constantly goes up. You suffer from something called adrenal fatigue because your adrenal glands are tired of producing adrenaline. When these hormones stay up, other hormones fluctuate in your body. Your insulin goes up, your insulin can go down. Your thyroxine can go up, your thyroxine can come down. So can your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone, and so many other hormones. So technically, yes, you can say thyroxine is a hormone. So if you have a thyroid problem, you have a hormonal issue. You have a hormonal imbalance, which gives us a lot of other mechanisms over and above just your thyroid medication to work with. And when you work with more mechanisms, you can possibly get more results rather than just lying on a, relying on a pill to keep your paper parameters in place, but you still have a problem. So when it comes to our Hashimoto's, we get so many clues. You know, our body could be telling us tomorrow you'll have a new autoimmune condition. And we've seen Hashimoto's patients also break out into eczema, into psoriasis, into vitiligo, into arthritis, because you never address the underlying cause of the problem. 
Now the leaky gut syndrome and a Hashimoto's are directly connected. When we have a leaky gut syndrome, the health of our gut isn't right. Our small intestines, think of it, you have like a fishing net. Now just imagine in your gut, there's a fishing net, a thin fishing net with small holes. This is perfect. Okay, all of the nutrients, all of the molecules from food, they squeeze across this net into your blood. From your small intestine, squeeze across this net into the blood. The, the net is supposed to keep out molecules that are not meant to get into your blood. Now, over time, because we're constantly bloated, we're constantly acidic, we continue to eat foods that we, are, that we don't tolerate well, whether it's wheat, whether it's dairy, whether it's certain food allergies that we get, or we have low stomach acid. Now, the bad bacteria in your gut grows and starts poking holes in that thin fishing net. So those holes get larger and larger. Now, certain molecules that were supposed to be passed out of your system squeeze between this fishing net into your blood, a place they were never supposed to be, okay? And your immune system wakes up to protect you and attack this. Some of these molecules, it's called molecular mimicry. Some of them resemble your thyroid gland. So it starts attacking, your immune system starts to attack your thyroid gland. Some of them, your skin, your joints, your cartilage, you have arthritis, you have lupus, you have vitiligo, and the list goes on and on. Multiple sclerosis, your own immune system starts to attack your myelin sheet, the sheet that protects your nerves. So you see, yes, medicine is great for the symptom, but you have to address the root cause as well and fix and plug the problem. So yes, a lot of Hashimoto thyroid patients will also have commonalities of gut problems, constant bloating, candida, thrush, acidity, slow digestion, constipation, IBS, and all of these symptoms. So you gotta address that. So you look at adrenal fatigue, which is your stress levels, controllable. You look at your gut. Yes, you can rebuild your gut to treat all of that stuff. Now, when you're looking at an underactive thyroid gland, let's say your anti-TPO and your anti-ATG ATG is fine. That means you have an underactive gland. Your underactive gland is caused because of several reasons. Number one, your nutrition. Yes, your thyroid gland needs nutrition. It needs micronutrients. It needs iodine. It needs selenium. It needs trace minerals. It needs B vitamins. It needs all of these things. It needs the right fats. So everyone who's going fat-free on fat-free diets eventually end up having thyroid problems. That's why their metabolism slows down. Your liver health has to be excellent because your T4, T3 conversion happens in the liver. So you can't just look at the thyroid gland and ignore the liver. So you've got to clean up your liver, you've got to give your liver the foods that it requires, the fats that it requires, like MCTs, medium chain triglycerides that you will find in pure ghee, that you will find in pure coconut oil, which is a powerful medicine when it comes to healing the thyroid gland. You need to get selenium from your Brazil nut, from your pumpkin seeds, from your foods, or from your supplementation that your doctor or your integrative specialist may give you while you are on your medication. So you have a medication to artificially stimulate thyroxine because you have a hypothyroid, but parallelly you are also nourishing your thyroid gland and your liver to produce thyroxine naturally. So as you start to do that, your thyroid levels turn, to be, turn out to be better and your doctor says, hey, let's reduce your dosage. Let's come down from 100 to 75. Hey, let's come down from 75 to 50. You're still doing well. Let's come down to a 25. Wow, your levels are still looking good. Let's come down to a 12.5. Now let's come down to a five. Stay like that for three months and then let's get you off and see if you're stable. So if you get off your medication and your thyroid levels are still fine because you're naturally producing thyroxine, guess what? Your thyroid glands started to work. It's as simple as it sounds, but it's different for everyone. You can't just go out and drink coconut oil and take selenium and all of that stuff. It's gotta be planned into your lifestyle. The second thing, because it's not just food. If you are doing intensive training when you have a thyroid, gland, a, a thyroid problem, that's gonna work worse for you. Understand, the thyroid gland slows you down. Many people have a thyroid issue because your gland, your endocrine system tries to slow you down and your metabolism because you're moving too fast in life. You're not resting, you're sleep deprived, you're stressed out. So for survival, your thyroid gland controls how fast you move, which is why when people have hypothyroid, a lot of them start to put on weight and they say, no matter what I do, my metabolism is slow. It is because your thyroid gland has controlled you. So if you are doing intensive workouts when you have a thyroid problem and an adrenal gland problem, it's a big problem. You gotta slow down your exercise. More doesn't mean more weight loss. Sometimes quality exercise done in a very gentle manner that can support your thyroid gland and weight loss is 100% possible. So for all these people who have been reversing their thyroid gland, they move down to walking and yoga. 
It's little body weight exercises. They stop doing HIIT and all the intensive workouts. The people who reverse their thyroid can now go back to a normal lifestyle. So it's not about just coconut oil, it's not just about selenium, it's not just about iodine and liver health. It's the kind of exercise you do, the kind of recovery and rest you give your body. Sleep deprivation and thyroid are directly connected with each other. It's as simple as that. If you wake up tired every single day, adrenal fatigue, thyroxine falls. So you have a hormonal imbalance. So it's an integrated approach again, the kind of exercise, the kind of food that suits your gland. But yes, you should know that you can nourish a gland. A gland is a collection of tissues. Tissues need to be nourished. Every tissue, the tissues in your kidney, the tissues in your heart, the tissues in your brain, they need to be nourished with the right nutrition. And most people who are even healthy have deficiencies of these basic vitamins and minerals because of the quality of our food. The quality of our food, our soil is so poor that on paper, a bunch of spinach can give us a ton of nutrition. But by the time it reaches us, because of the depleted minerals and soil, it's got half the nutrition. And then we cook it, we fry it, we boil it, and we kill the other half of it. Which is why a lot of us think we eat healthy, but we are deficient in micronutrients, signifying to us that we have to start looking after our environment, sourcing ethical food, and yes, if you have a deficiency, you have to supplement. There's good supplements, there are bad supplements, but like the word supplement means, supplementing a deficiency. And there's a whole population who abuses supplements because it sounds good, oh, selenium helps with weight loss, let's start popping selenium. No, that's equally dangerous. So yes, when it comes to your thyroid gland, again, you have an excuse or you have a choice. What are you going to do? Just complaining about your thyroid is never gonna fix it. But understanding the anatomy of the human body, micronutrition and lifestyle integrated together, that's how thousands of people across the world are reversing their thyroid glands, they're off medication, their own doctors have pulled them off medication and are also reversing other lifestyle conditions like your type two diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome and everything else. So today you have a choice to change your mindset, a mindset that is not your fault where you were told, hey, you can't reverse this. You gotta be on a pill for a lifetime. But then answer the simple question of how thousands of people are doing it and change your mindset. It's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's about what is right for you because your health matters. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.